They work in the dark, the cold, the bad weather, and they all volunteer to get on this team. There are state police divers, and they are constantly training for dangerous situations underwater, from navigating in dark waters to heavy lifting and recovery operations. WFSB photojournalist Eric Budney caught up with them recently at the end of a two-week course at the Portland Quarry. Take a look. Service of divers, just be advised, you can flip right back to the chain. You got a com check on them? Everybody good to go? Everybody's ass good? The plan is we'll leave the reels and the tanks here. Oh, right. My name is Master Sergeant Christopher McCarthy with the Connecticut State Police Emergency Services Unit. You can just splash from right here. This is the the, the last of a two-week training evolution. Top side has you loud and clear. I want to cross the front and go down to the wheels. Today is uh, heavy lifting and rigging for underwater submerged objects. Hey, Pat, they're just going to go and do a recon, so whenever so, you get down yeah. here. Typical diving environment is hazardous in itself. <laughs> Divers, they have to manage their air source. They have to manage their dive gear. Go ahead, close your snorkel, breathe that rig. I did. Breathing okay? There's hazards, uh, sharp metal, uh, it, old trucks and old metal debris that's on the bottom they may encounter. Rig breathing okay? There's a Another pickup one. truck down there. They're trying to bring up. Red hose, front end. Yellow hose, back end. If possible, you want that wrapped around an axle and you clip back in. On the, the very first lift, we had two airbags, one to the rear of the pickup, one to the front. As they put air into the bag, uh, it, it went across a jagged piece of metal on the pickup truck, punctured the airbag. When Murphy's Law can happen, it happens. We had to get another airbag, bring it down. Now they have to find another strapping point. You know, it, it's one thing to talk about it on the surface and, and in a perfect world, put a strap here, a shackle there. It's completely different when you're 30 feet underwater and you can't see anything or you have very limited visibility. Now it's you're feeling and trying to run a, a piece of chain or a shackle with, with just feel. You can't see anything. The divers on team one, we have uh, divers from team two. The, the area, New England, uh, Vermont, Maine, Rhode Island, Massachusetts, New York, everybody's here today is kind of a joint training effort. They've been training for two weeks. This old quarry was a working quarry. There's steel cables that still run along the bottom and old anchor points and things that they're going to run into and, and are very dangerous. If you're a little bit cocked and you travel 100 feet like that, you're going to be way off to the other side. But it's kind of uh, waking up their brains to work in an environment that they're not supposed to be in. What was the problem with the rear? You looked at it. You're against your absolute intuition. You want the bag underneath the bed? It's, it's a tough notch when you go underwater. I always use double indicator marks on the way out. Second evolution that's going on, it's an underwater navigation course. The divers start on the dock area. They're given a compass heading. Once they go underwater, there's no sense of direction. It's, it, it's black, it's, it's you know, uh, limited visibility. Now you have to follow a compass heading. That's, it's real life diving for us. Team two, your next coordinates are two, three, five. Team two, two, three, five. You're weighing the benefits versus the risks, right? Do we go into water today, even to do a recovery? Do we go into water today to do a lift? Can we do it another day? Those are the benefits over risk. Top side all divers, once you're all together, go ahead and leave the surface and do your recon. Uh, we have to deal with the environment. We have to deal with the conditions. And they learn that here. They get in, they think they're all set. Now they're not. They have to deal with that. Well, I think it's their personalities that make them do this. And the reward, you know, helping others. Um, they like their job. They like uh, being a SWAT team member. They like to be on the bomb squad. This is money well spent. Fascinating. The Connecticut divers train with those from neighboring states in things like inspecting cruise ships with the Massachusetts State Police, as well as ice training up in Maine.